Let's Dr. Friedman, first I'd like to thank you on behalf of all of us uh, of having Bob Chittister talk you into doing this program. <laughs> well, you thank Bob for talking me into it, don't you? Well, I, I've already thanked him. But I think you've put your finger on what really concerns me and, and many other people in the business community, and that is this whole area of, of increased government regulation, uh, the four-letter words you were talking about. Uh, I don't share the, the optimism that you appear to have of being able to do something about this. And I wondered if you could perhaps uh, disclose some of the reasons why you feel that this can be changed, and perhaps at the end of that comment on, on the whole, uh, to me as an example of this regulation, what they're trying, what's currently going on in the Senate and in this whole area of gas deregulation, uh, because it seems to me that uh, it's all backwards. They've got the whole regulatory thing backwards because I've always felt that if you somehow deregulated gas, uh, the opportunity for producers to get more for their gas, they would go on out and search for more, and then we'd have more, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Well, I quite agree on the final thing, but it's very interesting. To, in, uh, that, uh, that's a, in a microcosm what's happening all over and what the problem is. Uh, let me say first, I am by no means uh, persuaded that we're going to turn the corner and go the other direction. It may be that we are on the downslide and we're not going to recover. If you look at most societies over the ages, if you look at most golden ages, and we've been through a golden age, they tend to be short, 100, 150 years at the most and to be followed by a period of deterioration and decline. That's what happened to Rome, that's what happened to Greece. No reason why we shouldn't follow the same steps. So we may go in the same direction. But the reason I have some hope is mostly the major source I have hope I have, frankly, is because government is so inefficient. <laughs> that's the real hope. If government were spending the 40% of our income that it now spends efficiently, I'd give up hope. But thank God they waste most of it. <laughs> people complain about waste. I don't complain about waste. Tell me, would you people in this room really like the IRS to be spending its money efficiently? <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, in general, we don't like waste. But one of the effects of this is that government doesn't have as much control as you might think it would. Because you and the other businessmen, you see, you have a war. You have a few hundred thousand or a million bureaucrats. And you have 200 million people figuring ways to get around the bureaucrats. And generally, we mostly can outsmart them. Now, that wastes our substance and makes us poorer. But at least it preserves some element of our freedom. Now, that's a major source of hope because it gives us maneuver. And it also means that the public learns that this is inefficient. Now, the greatest source of danger, in my opinion, is in large part the business community. Don't make any mistake about it. To be pro-free enterprise is not to be pro-business. They are two very different things. And again, I'm not blaming people, but only trying to understand them. Go to the oil and gas regulation. Who are the lobbyists for keeping the controls on oil? If you read the newspapers, you'd think it was consumers. It's a bunch of nonsense. The major source of pressure for keeping oil controls on are one part of the oil industry. Because what you have in this case, consumers don't benefit from the control of the price of oil or gas. It's a bunch of nonsense. We pay the full cost of oil and gas. We're importing oil from abroad. Well, we have to pay for it, don't we? I, I assure you the sheiks of Araby aren't paying for it. We're paying for it. And if we don't pay for it directly at the gas pump or at the fuel pump, we pay for it indirectly through taxes. So we're paying for it. Where's the pressure against deregulation? The fact is that right now we have a system under which you have, through price control, a heavy tax on domestically produced oil, which is used to pay a subsidy to those people who refine oil at home and also to pay a subsidy for importing OPEC oil. To tell the full story gets too complicated. But that's the essence of it. It's one part of the oil industry versus another part of the oil industry. Similarly, there's been a great deal of discussion right now about steel. 
The steel industry isn't in favor of free enterprise. It wants tariffs and wants import quotas. Again, I don't blame them. They're trying to protect their own interests. But the rest of us are fools if we let them get away with it. So that I'm not fully optimistic that we're going to solve this problem. But the reason I have some optimism is because what fundamentally determines what happens are the attitudes and philosophy of the people at large. Washington has been doing these things because the public has been telling him to. And the only hope is that the public changes its views and its attitudes and comes to recognize what's going on. And there's been a big change there. You no longer have the, the, the immediate belief on the part of the public at large that the way to solve the problem is to have government impose more controls. The public at large is fed up with that. And you have more and more examples. Don't you think it's been a very good example for the public at large to have Freddie Laker destroy the, uh, pr uh, the, the pricing system for, for transatlantic flights, which have been maintained by the Civil Aeronautics Board for these many years? Well, I think as those examples come along, the case for deregulating air airlines is going to be very strong. And I think you may be able to get something done. That's why I have some optimism.